Welcome classic rock fans to a seasonal ranking video and today we're looking at the 10 best Christmas albums. Yes it is that silly time of year once more but before we get into my festive favourites I will urge you to click like subscribe and do check that notification bell and check some of the links below this video for ways you can support the sterling work done here at Classic Album Review. Also stay tuned to the end of this video where I'll include some honourable festive mentions. Number 10 is the last month of the year by the Kingston Trio from 1960. What is interesting about this album is it celebrates the time of year and doesn't particularly embrace all that traditional Christmas schmaltz. The Kingston Trio of course were David Gard, Bob Shane and Nick Reynolds. But what is fascinating about this record is they bring together some compelling threads from European folk tunes, lullabies and as one critic has pointed out even spirituals from the American Deep South. But they embellish them with their own very distinctive style. And as one listens to them, we can easily detect how there was certainly an influence on the Beach Boys. But it's worth noting that on this album, some of the uh, topics are rather visceral, shall we say. In fact, there's one track on here called uh, Bye Bye Thou Little Tiny Child, which deals with the massacre of the innocents. I mean, how seasonal, eh? It's a record that's ahead of its time. But for those Christmas lunatics out there, be assured there are some festive warblings on here as well. Number nine is Midwinter Graces by Tori Amos from 2009. Tori Amos is no stranger to the profound beauty of the season. I mean, who remembers the icy and metaphorical resonances of winter from her Little Earthquakes album, as well as her beautiful rendition of Little Drummer Boy with those breathy articulations. She's also no stranger to what I would call Christian iconography. A uh, big hit for her in 91 was Crucify, remember, as well as God, which featured on her second album, Under the Pink, perhaps belying her upbringing as a pastor's daughter. And the cover of this one, we see Tori with her arms outstretched, waiting, waiting to ascend. Best way to describe the sound on this album is kind of a stripped down classical Baroque style, which sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, really, but it's the, the best way I have of. Uh, trying to frame this music for you. It's a lightly frosted collection of seasonal numbers comprising of five secular originals and nine traditional Christmas songs, all surveying the Yuletide landscape of ice and snow and wonderment as well, presented in true Tory style. The New York Times described this album as possessing a hymn-like serenity. The standout tracks for me are the wonderful Pink and Glitter and I particularly like Winter's Carol, which is a, a favourite of mine and my family's. Number eight is If on a Winter's Night by Sting from 2008. This is an exquisite and atmospheric album, a seasonal record that looks to evoke the barren and wintry landscape of those frosty December mornings. One critic has written that it tends to favour the formal over the familiar, so instead of the usual seasonal fare, we get wintry tales and madrigals, folk and frosty hymns of the season. It does have a distinctly medieval feel with some beautiful textures explored due to the wonderful, wonderful instrumentation. We do get the familiar vocalizations of Sting, so there's uh, plenty of wine on this one. For me, this album is indelibly linked with Durham Cathedral. Uh, check out Sting's wonderful performance of this music in Durham Cathedral. The concert was filmed. It's on YouTube. Uh, talk about joyous and triumphant. I never saw this concert, but I do remember the student union where you used to get uh, a pint of beer for a pound and you used to cross over this, there was this bridge, you just crossed over the bridge and it led you to the cathedral square and you could sit in Durham Cathedral even quite late at night. It was a very haunting experience. Number seven is the Elvis Presley Christmas album from 1957. This is an interesting blend of rock and roll and gospel that still manages to tap into that sense of hymnal wonder. He is backed by the wonderful vocal group, the Jordan Airs, who do a fantastic job on this record. Santa Claus is back in town as a wonderful bluesy swagger to it, and his rendition of White Christmas has a few jazzy inflections. Uh, to my mind, it's not as charming or as nuanced as uh, Bing's conversational crooning but it's a, a nice rendition nonetheless. I think Rolling Stone perfectly summed up this record when they said it was a, a wonderful mix of light-hearted rock and roll. We get Santa, Bring My Baby Back to Me, as well as you know, some nice versions of traditional festive numbers like uh, Little, Town, oh, Little Town of Bethlehem, as well as nods to his country and gospel roots in songs like uh, Take My Hand, Precious Lord, 
Let's not forget this was released in 1957 when Elvis was still considered dangerous. And he no doubt had some swivel and swagger to these festive reworkings. Number six is The Ventures Christmas album from 1965. This car crash of an album feels so wrong in many respects, but it just works for me. We get an interesting rendition of these festive tunes embellished with the Ventures trademark twangy guitar and surf vibe. And these Yuletide melodies, of course, are still accompanied by the usual accoutrements of uh, bells and uh, jangly bits as well. And I love that version of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which references the Beatles' I Feel Fine, Frosty the Snowman, as well as uh, Tequila by the Champs. This feels like a sonic and stylistic mashup as surf and sleigh bells tend to merge disgustingly well on this one. Silver Bells is an interesting number. Rolling Stone has said it has something of the Velvet Underground to it. It always reminds me of the birds, not the twittery things, but the actual band. Although this record, it has been noted, was recorded in 1965. Overall, I'd have to say this record feels like a festive acid trip. My word, what could be more fun than that? Number five is A Jolly Christmas by Frank Sinatra from 1957. Many have argued that this album is of kind of a riposte to Elvis Presley with his uh, rockabilly gospel-infused versions of Christmas cheer. I'm not sure how that could be true, really. I'm pretty sure this album came out before then. But there's no doubt that this is a more traditional rendering of these uh, festive numbers. One can imagine uh, putting your feet up in front of a blazing fire, scratching the chillblains and enjoying a nice glass of mulled wine as you listen to this. And Sinatra sings with such an effortless grace, with his hat tipped to the Christmas market. Heartstrings are mercilessly tugged out with songs like I'll Be Home for Christmas. And amongst others, it's schmaltzy Christmas magic at its very, very best. Some have suggested that Sinatra actually lays down the foundations for the concept album, or the blueprint for the concept album, or the mood album around about this time. He certainly establishes that motif of masculine heartbreak a gauntlet that was picked up by artists like Ryan Adams, of course, many years later. But what I like about Sinatra is that there's, a, there's an edginess to the way he sings, that bourbon-infused drawl, setting him apart from the more homely croonings of Bing Crosby, or much later on, of course, Andy Williams. Number four is Merry Christmas by Bing Crosby from 1945. Those heralding notes of God rest ye merry gentlemen underpin the limitations of the technology at the time. Yet nevertheless, they barely restrain the timbre or that voice. And his rendering of Silent Night is uh, remarkable on this one. That smooth baritone voice in this religious observation has a soothing quality, like a lullaby almost. Somebody once described um, Crosby singing as like having caramel poured in your ears. Of course, he was much younger when he did this record and his uh, voice rings out like a cathedral bell even amid the crackle and hiss of these recordings. There's no doubt with this album, of course, that uh, Crosby's dreamy, velvety rendering of these numbers is just the tonic for a frosty December morning. And he's now very much part of the iconography of Christmas. Kate Bush was right to pay tribute to him in her wonderful December Will Be Magic Again. Number three is the Christmas album from 2003 by Jethro Tull. Jethro Tull often explored textures associated with medieval folk and chamber music, lending itself perfectly to the Christmas season. And this is one of those credible Christmas albums, and there's very few of those, I must admit. Uh, we get these wonderful jazzy intonations, some folky flourishes, Celtic stylings, all underpinned, of course, by Anderson's wry and ironic wit. Last Man at the Party is an intriguing a number on this album, where Anderson once more shines a light on the uh, the hypocrisies of the Christmas excesses, which is reminiscent of Tull's A Christmas Song. We get uh, seasonal carols and wistful tunes, all punctuated by Anderson's trademark flute. If you're not predisposed to like Christmas music, I think you have to be some kind of prog Grinch not to enjoy this one. Grinch is a word that's often applied when Christmas spirits in short supply. And there's some Tull tunes on here that are very complimentary of the season, of course, ring out solstice bells, a weather cock and fires at midnight. This album is uh, an essential listening, indelibly linking the season with the beardy fellow. Number two is the Beach Boys Christmas album from 1964. Many artists look to exploit the commercial possibilities the festive season offers. It becomes a veritable smorgasbord of sleigh bells and schmaltz, but some manage to infuse these well-furrowed classics with something that is specifically theirs that makes them an interesting listen and not sound so tired and cliched. 
I rather like Brenda Lee's rocking around the Christmas tree. Uh, the melody is doo-wop version of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Even Bobby Helm's immortal Jingle Bell rock. Even the Fab Four festive records sent out to their fan club members. All that yuletide bilge. But the Beach Boys are a band usually associated with sun, surf and cars. They present this Christmas record as pure Californian pop. Um, a kind of non-winter wonderland, if you will. I love this record, imbued with that Wilson family charm and freshly scrubbed Christmas nonsense. All smudged with those transcendent Beach Boys harmonies. If you like surfing and cars, you'll love Christmas. Number one is A Christmas Gift For You by Phil Spector from 1965. This is uh, the quintessential Christmas party album, and I must admit I don't usually like Christmas party albums. I much prefer more solemn reflections of the season than traditional carols. But this one is so classy, not an adjective we'd usually associate with Christmas. You just can't help but marvel at the arrangements with that trademark wall of sound splurge associated with Phil Spector. In this case, it, uh, it certainly adds opulence and drama to the proceedings. You know, we get the wonderful Ronnie Spector belting out Frosty the Snowman and the Crystal Santa Claus is coming to town. These songs have been used so many times in Christmas films over the years that they're, they're very much part of Christmas DNA now. Spectre said he wanted to produce an album that captured the energy and the exuberance of the season, but he's also managed to produce a timeless pop record. This album thrums with life and sublime vocals. It has an energy that is just simply infectious. But there's a darkness that overshadows this album. Many of the stars that feature on it liken the experience to child abuse. But there's a darkness that kind of overshadows Phil Spector generally. But one can't deny that the man was a visionary. At the beginning of this video, I said there'd be a few honorable mentions. I feel I have to mention the Moody Blues Christmas album. Their music lends itself so well to the sort of lavish richness of the season. Accompanied by the soothing, mellifluous voice of Justin Hayward, it's just perfect. And the other one is Bob Dylan's Christmas album. I think it's Christmas in My Heart or something like that. I can't remember the actual title of it. This is an album that within the paradigms of Bob Dylan would rank very, very low, uh, I think. Uh, but in the paradigms that is the Christmas album, it's an interesting little artifact. Uh, and it's worth checking out, even if it's just to frighten the children with. But we have to cut Bob some slack, I think, as... Uh, a lot of the money from this record actually went to charity. So there you are, that's my 10 Christmas albums, my 10 favourite Christmas albums. Instead of ending with my usual salvo, I want to thank you all for watching and engaging this year. It means a lot to me. Thank you for your patronage and support. And here's hoping that you have a wonderful, warm, merry Christmas.